Hi everyone. This is the first video in a series of videos I'm creating showing step-by-step -step how to build an intricate sailing ship model. The hard thing about ship models is the sheer amount of time they take to complete. Most quality models literally take years of painstaking work. With this in mind, I decided to create a model someone with no previous experience or specialized tools could build. I settled on a design most people will recognize and which is also fairly easy to build, the Chinese junk. Incidentally, the word junk is derived from the Javanese word zhong, which means ship or large vessel. This slide shows the deck of one of my previous versions. The fun thing about this project is that you can literally use any type of wood you wish. Strict beginners might choose to use all basswood, which can be found in local craft stores, whereas experienced builders might choose to use more exotic woods. Now those using basswood will typically be painting their versions, which is what's been done to the rails on this photo. Those using specialty woods will probably stain their versions. It's entirely up to you. This build is what's known as a plank on bulkhead project. This means that the kit is built around a profile former, the center spine of the ship shown on the right side of the screen, with individual bulkheads joined to it perpendicularly. The planking of the vessel wraps around the bulkheads on the sides and over the tops in order to form the shape of the hull and deck. Now I have downloadable plans on my Patreon site, and a link to that is in the description of this video, but you can also just hit pause here Grab a sheet of thin paper and just trace the plans right off your screen. Okay, let's get started. The first thing to do is to obtain high quality plywood an eighth of an inch in thickness. When selecting your wood, it's strongly recommended to purchase your wood at a hobby shop rather than a lumber store. It's critical to select the straightest piece of wood available. If you see 10 pieces of wood to choose from, inspect each piece in order to find the one which is virtually perfect. It can be very trying to construct a model with warped plywood, and it can just lead to abandoned projects down the line. Now once you have your plywood, and a 12 inch by 12 inch piece is plenty, it's time to print out the plans unless you've already traced them. Now depending on the thickness of your plywood, you might need to make adjustments to the slots of each bulkhead and its associated slot in the plywood former. This slide assumes the plywood is thicker than the slot per the drawing. By using a ruler, new lines were drawn equally on both sides of the slot in order to make a new slot. It's normal to have to adjust slots in scratch-built drawings to conform with your individual plywood. Just remember that what you do to one side of the pattern must be copied exactly on the other side. Now once the slots and all of the bulkheads as well as the profile former agree with the thickness of your plywood, it's time to affix the patterns to the plywood. Just about any adhesive will work for this process. The only thing to keep in mind is that it's critical that the patterns are lying perfectly flat on a plywood and that there are no wrinkles present or the cutout shape will not be correct. It is a good idea to cut out each bulkhead individually and affix to the plywood. If you're using glue, it's also recommended to let the glue dry overnight before cutting. You can also just carefully trace the patterns onto the plywood as well. Now, how do you cut out the pieces? It really makes no difference whatsoever. Those with a scroll saw are probably already excited, however you don't need a fancy machine. I often use an old rusty saw to cut out my bulkheads. I'm just careful with it and use finesse. And yes, I am up to date on my tetanus shots. Um, once you have your bulkheads cut out, you can then use saws, files, or sandpaper in order to bring them to their final shapes. Now you do want to take your time on this part. One of the most important things about any ship build is to make sure that the profile former and its associated bulkheads are cut out and sanded with good accuracy. If these components are misshaped, the planking will be challenging to install. Now once the bulkheads and profile former have been cut out, it's time to clean them up. 
with a sanding block, gently run over the edges of all the surfaces in order to get rid of any rough edges or splinters. One of the best tools in your hobby arsenal is the mini flat file, which can be purchased at any hobby store. It's invaluable for shaping the slots in the bulkheads and profile former. Here's a photo of the profile former and bulkheads after they've been sanded and filed. You'll note that in several places the patterns have been scratched, sanded, gouged, etc. This is fine as the only thing we care about now is that the alignment marks at the tops of the slots are still in position. Now that the bulkheads and profile former have been cut out and cleaned up a little, it's time to test fit the bulkheads into their respective slots in the profile former. One by one, place a bulkhead into its corresponding slot in the profile former. If you need to file either the profile former or the bulkhead, just make sure to file each side of the slot equally. The goal is to have each bulkhead fit into the profile former nice and snug. Each bulkhead should rest into its respective place within the profile former with the line at the top of its slot matching the line on a profile former. These alignment guides are there to ensure proper hull structure. This slide shows one of the bulkheads seated into the profile former. However, can you see what's wrong with the bulkhead? In this photo, the top of the bulkhead's not completely flush with the top of the profile former. And I'll say it again, it's extremely important for you to seat all of your bulkheads into their respective positions and make sure that the tops of them match the tops of the profile former well. Note the type of mini file I used for shaping the slots. This slide shows all of the bulkheads seated into position but not yet glued. By looking at your model, both from the front and from the back, you'll be able to tell which bulkheads have alignment issues and need to be tinkered with. With the exception of bulkhead D, it doesn't matter which way you seat the bulkheads, whether it's paper side facing forward or aft, since there are alignment guides on both sides of the profile former and bulkhead slots. Bulkhead D, however, should have the paper side facing forward in order to provide a plywood on plywood connection along its backside if you haven't already removed the paper from the bulkhead. If every piece now fits snugly in its slot, its alignment lines match the alignment lines on the profile former, and it fits perfectly perpendicular into its slot, gluing can commence. Now since it's critical for the bulkheads to be perfectly perpendicular to the profile former, many modelers will glue small square pieces on both sides of the bulkheads against the profile former to ensure proper seating. Some modelers use mini squares to check the bulkheads as they're drying and make minute adjustments as necessary. It really doesn't matter how you glue the bulkheads in as long as they're in a proper position once the glue dries. For this build, a careful eye and patience were used. Both edges of each slot in the bulkheads and profile former received a layer of glue and the bulkheads were seated one by one, about one every 15 minutes. The excess glue which seeped out of the slots was pressed into the joints with a finger in order to provide more strength to the joints. It's important to cut the paper of the profile former away where the bulkheads will slide into position in order to make sure that there is a wood to wood bond. Now occasionally, despite our best efforts, errors will creep into the build. Perhaps the model is knocked over unnoticed while drying and the bulkhead set in the wrong position. So what now? So rest assured, all is not lost by a long shot. This slide is an example of a scenario where not only one bulkhead is off, but two. And to make it even better, they're off in differing directions. One's leaning to the left and one's leaning to the right. In this situation, it's just a matter of gluing a strip of wood to the side of each bulkhead which is short. The long side of each bulkhead will be taken care of during the sanding and fairing process later.